Hey everyone, in this lesson we're talking about nephritic syndrome. So nephritic syndrome is a glomerular syndrome involving four different things. One is that it has a decreased GFR, glomerular filtration rate. Two is that it is associated with anemia. Three is that it's associated with an increased inflammatory markers. And four is that it has an ECF or extracellular uh, fluid volume that is overloaded. And nephritic syndrome is due to glomerular inflammation. So it is a glomerulonephritis. So here is just a small picture of a glomerular or glomerulus. So nephritic syndrome is on a spectrum with nephrotic syndrome. Nephrotic syndrome is when we have more proteinuria, so we get excess of proteinuria, but with nephritic syndrome we get less proteinuria, but we have more hematuria. So what's the presentation of nephritic syndrome? The presentation of nephritic syndrome can be remembered with the mnemonic pharaoh. So we want to think of a pharaoh. It's not spelled exactly the same, but this definitely helps us remember what the clinical presentation of nephritic syndrome is. So pharaoh P starts with uh, proteinuria. So proteinuria in nephritic syndrome is generally lower. It's about uh, less than 3.5 grams per 1.73 meters squared per day. Whereas in nephrotic syndrome, it would be more than 3.5 grams. Hematuria, so the H is for hematuria. Hematuria is, has an abrupt onset. Azotemia, so the A in ferro stands for azotemia. Azotemia essentially is an increased creatinine and urea. R is for red blood cell casts. O is for oliguria. And H is for hypertension. So Pharaoh, the clinical presentation of nephritic syndrome, goes by the, the mnemonic device Pharaoh. Proteinuria, that is less than 3.5 grams. Hematuria, that it has an abrupt onset. Azotemia, that has increased creatinine and urea. Red blood cell casts, oliguria, hypertension. There are also a couple of other signs and symptoms we may see in a patient. Sometimes a patient can have peripheral edema, they can have puffy eyes, and they can also have what is described as smoky urine. So nephritic syndrome has a variety of causes, and we look at three major categories of causes of nephritic syndrome. The first is anti-glomerular basement membrane mediated, anti-GBM mediated. And what's important about this one is that it is anti-GBM positive, so it is positive for the anti-GBM antibody. There are two different types of anti-GBM mediated nephritic syndrome. The first one has lung involvement. It has lung hemorrhage. This one is known as good pastures disease. So if we have Nephritic syndrome, that's anti-GBM positive with lung hemorrhage, we have good pastures disease. The second one is without lung involvement, without lung hemorrhage. This one is itself anti-GBM disease. So anti-GBM disease has anti-GBM positive nephritic syndrome without lung involvement, without lung hemorrhage. And with anti-GBM mediated nephritic syndromes, they have linear deposits. The second main category of causes of nephritic syndrome includes immune complex mediated. And to determine if it's immune complex mediated, we have to look at C3 complement levels. If C3 is normal, there are a couple of different causes. One is that it is either IgA nephropathy or it is Hinox purpura. If we find that 
C3 complement levels are decreased, it is either membranoproliferative glomerular nephritis or lupus or infective endocarditis or a post-infectious glomerular nephritis or it could be a cryoglobulinemia. So again, we want to look at C3 levels if they're normal, IgA nephropathy, Henox scondlin purpura. If it's decreased C3, we want to think about proliferative glomerular nephritis, lupus, infective endocarditis, post-infectious glomerular nephritis, or cryoglobulinemia. And with immune complex mediated, it has granular deposits as opposed to those linear deposits we see in anti-GBM mediated. The third large category of causes is the non-immune mediated. And these are ANCA positive. And ANCA positive, we have to look at two different types of ANCA. One is C-ANCA, and with C-ANCA, we have to think about granulomatosis with polyangitis as a cause. If it's P-ANCA, we have to think about churg strauss or microscopic polyangitis. With non-mediated nephritic syndrome that is ANCA positive, it has few or no deposits. So when we're trying to determine the cause of nephritic syndrome, we have to look at, is it nephritic syndrome? Does it have the clinical presentation of nephritic syndrome? Then we want to check does it, is it positive for anti-GBM antibodies? Is there a lung involved? We need to check C3 levels. Is C3 normal or decreased? And we need to check ANCA. So we need to check C ANCA and P ANCA. So we need to check if it's ANCA positive or not. That will basically help us to rule out all the causes of nephritic syndrome. And there's one last category of causes of nephritic syndrome. This is basically a um, combination of causes, basically. So it's a double antibody positive disease. So sometimes instead of just having one of those three main causes, either anti-GBM related, immune mediated, or non-immune mediated, we could have a mixture. It could be features of type 1 or type 3. So we could have anti-GBM positive with ANCA positive, and that would be considered a double antibody positive disease, and we get features of both those types. So again, it is positive. It's a double antibody positive disease. Once we have nephritic syndrome, how do we treat it? There's several things we can do to treat it. One is pulse steroid treatment. So it is due to glomerular inflammation, we can give pulse steroid therapy to help reduce inflammation. We can also give immunosuppression to also help with this. We also want to control the patient's blood pressure. They have hypertension in this condition, in nephritic syndrome, there is hypertension. We want to control their blood pressure. And we also want to monitor the patient for progression to end-stage renal disease. So those are the four main goals of treatment for nephritic syndrome. Anyways, guys, I hope you found this lesson helpful. That was a quick lesson on nephritic syndrome. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe for more videos like this one. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.